let me clear my throat every time I go into my car. I don't care. Every other day, I'm, I'm, I hear this song played on the radio. Did you know this song was going to be as big as it is right now? I had no idea. I mean, we don't know anything about God's plans until they happen. You know what I mean? Um, I just put it out there and I let him do the rest. That's about right. it. Right, right. So when did you decide to take to some records and start sampling music? Uh, were you did, were you always a, a fan of hip hop? When did you fall in love with hip hop? I mean, early seventies. Well, well, for the most part, when I first heard King Tim the Third, um, when I heard his record with the Fatback Band, mm -hmm. it's called King Tim the Third Personality Jock. Then when and I was like maybe seventy nine or something like that. Um, and then when I heard Rappers Delight and Curtis Blow, Rappers Delight was through Sugar Hill Gang. And then, you know, all the rest of the pioneers, Curtis Blow, Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, and on and on. Um, right. So for me, you know, it's always been about hip hop, but well, that's half of me. The other half of me has always been about go go since I first heard Chuck Brown. I'm born and raised in Washington, D.C. So half of me is hip hop, the other half is go go. And that's how, you know, you get the sound that I have. It's like a hybrid kind of thing. You know what I mean? Okay, so you took the go go sounds from and and mixed it in with the with hip, hip hop, with hip hop. Okay, all right. So did you start out DJing at a younger age? Was this something that you've been doing ever since you were a kid, or when did you actually start getting into DJing and sampling music and and stuff like that? Well, all right. Um, I started as a DJ in 1977. I became a recording artist in 1986. Okay. My first record was a song called The Music Ain't Loud Enough to Pump Up the Volume. I've had a record somewhere on the Billboard Charts Top 100, somewhere, mm -hmm. 86, 87, 88, all the way up to 96 when Let Me Clear My Throat came out. Mm -hmm. Let Me Clear My Throat came out in 1996. Uh, that, was, that was my third live recording uh just like i said i started recording in 86 but my first live recording started in 1994 at a song called the 20 minute workout that was okay. my first live recording we did that live at a club called ivory's uptown lounge shout out to steve branch in richmond virginia that was 1994 then we had i got that feeling that was recorded live at a place called hammerjacks uh, that used to be in baltimore maryland um 1996 came around and Clear My Throat was recorded live at a place called Bahama Bay. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually did the live version first. Uh, the, well, the original version was done at Bahama Bay. And then the video version, which was recorded live as well, was done at a club called Gotham's. And that was 1996 as well. And that featured the late, great Biz Marquis and That's Dougie Fresh. Biz Marquis, yeah. Mm hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so this was that song was recorded in a club. So you guys, what did it? What did it happen instantly, or did you guys plan for this song? You didn't know it was going to get as big as it did today. Oh uh, well, you know, once again, um, you know, you don't know what God got planned. Right. You follow true. His orders and let Him do what He what He normally does. You know what right. I mean? When you when you're listening, when you're taking all your orders from Him, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that that's me. I'm that guy. Right. Um, once again, I had no idea. I just put it out there. Right, right. You know, but the 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 concept for the song "Let Me Clear My Throat" came as an accident that happened one night uh, when I was playing at Ivory's. I played at Ivory's for two years, between the years of 1992 up to like 1994, maybe 95. Okay. And the idea for the song "Let Me Clear My Throat" was born at this club called Ivory's. Okay. Um, to make a long story short, I decided to record the record live at a show that I was doing, that I got booked for, uh, just like I said earlier, in Philadelphia at a place called Bahama Bay, mm -hmm. which was, uh, they had an outdoor event. It was well over 5,000 people at this thing. They had to set up like a beach uh, party or something. It was in a parking lot of the club. We weren't inside the club. We were outside on the parking lot. They brought in sand, volleyball nets, crazy. I remember we Bahama Bay. Live right there, one take. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, all the live recordings are done in one take mm. because I want to capture 
the energy that's going on right then and there. Right. Nobody knows that I'm recording these records. We just come on and do them. So how did it get from you recording the record to going to the radio? How did you, how were you able to get it to go to the radio? I mean, at this particular time, I was signed to a, a label called CLR Records. Okay. Uh, which was ran by uh, 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 a friend of mine named Steve Janice. He's out of Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, and we, they put the record out and it's <laughs> just like I say, I get the rest. That's it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Kind of caught fire there a little bit. So, you know, what is that once it went viral and, and, and went as big as it did, when did you decide you wanted to bring in Dougie Fresh and Bismarcky uh, to be uh, on the remix of it? Well, you know, we had to shoot a video. We hadn't, we didn't have a video at the time. So once again, there are two versions of the song. There's the original version that was recorded live at Bahama Bay. And you hear me shout out Bahama Bay in that version. Uh -huh. But once again, when it was time to shoot the video, then we said, all right, I said, who can I bring in to kind of take this thing to the next level? Mm -hmm. And I could have gotten anybody I wanted at that time. Anybody. Well, yeah. Anybody. Mm -hmm. I promise you that. You know what I'm saying? Because the record was nuts at the time. Right. So I said, the only two people to me that fit what was going on musically with that record was Dougie Fresh and Bismarck. Mm -hmm. It's a party record. This record is rooted in in what hip hop is, which is basically, uh, as they used to say, two turntables and a microphone, the DJ and the MC. Mm -hmm. And hip hop started at the party. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So, you know, uh, uh, Let Me Clear My Throat has the elements of call and response. And, you know, it, it was done off a classic breakbeat, the 900 number that was produced by DJ Mark 45 King. So mm -hmm. this is a real hip hop record. You know what right. I mean? Right. Uh, when it was time for us to shoot the video, I'm talking to the video director. He said, well, where's the track? I said, we're going to record the track. He was talking about, you know, the, the music track that we were going to use, shoot the video off of. Right. I told him, I said, we're going to record the song. We're going to record the track live right here. The Joker looked at me like, what? <laughs> I was like, look, all you got to do is just keep the cameras pointed towards us. Right. Got the rest. So we recorded the first pass, you know, of the track all right. the way through. And then the rest of the stuff was just a bunch of B-roll shots. We right. recorded the track live again. So there are two live versions. The original version, which was done at Bahama Bay. Uh -huh. And another live recording, which was the um, the video version. Right, right. Oh, that's what's up. So I, I I was listening to it earlier, and I was I was like, you know what? This song is a classic. It's a classic. You got classic artists with you on there, uh, Biz Markey and uh, Dougie Fresh. Um, have you been traveling and performing? Are you still performing now to this day? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just okay. got home today. It's like I said, I was in the Carolinas this weekend. We were gone for three days. Okay. Um, um, thank God, like, me and me and Rob Bass uh, were having a conversation one time, and we were talking about being members of a special club. And the club that we were talking about is the club of people that have at least one song mm -hmm. that they could that they could uh perform or I guess to use street lingo, eat off of mm. the rest of their lives. Mm. And all you need is one. Mm -hmm. I have several records that people know, you know, especially the DJs, but you gotta have that one that 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 becomes your signature. Right. And let me clear my throat, just happened to become my signature record. So and the record crossed over pop and everything. Right. Like, you know, a lot of a lot of my peers have hit records, but they don't have pop records. Right, right. You know, right. something crossed over and getting played on pop radio. Mm -hmm. I happen to be in that club. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I saw some. I saw you. Uh, I saw something where you mentioned about Donald Trump had used uh, you sampled your song for something. I don't know what it was for. Uh, what happened with that situation? With I'm with sorry, I I, I got a a call that was uh, interrupted, which you said a moment ago. Can you oh, say again? okay, yeah, I um uh I saw something where you uh was spoke about Donald Trump using a sample to uh using your song. Was he what what was he using the song for? 
I don't know. I guess he's a DJ Cool fan. I guess I have no idea. It might not have been him. It was probably somebody, and, and I'm quite sure it was somebody that was ahead of his campaign committee at the time that just said, oh, let's use this song because everybody likes it. Right. And uh, well, I didn't like it and I didn't know anything about it until people start, you know, texting me and calling me and cool. What's up? Da, 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 da. And I'm like, what? I called my manager and him and my lawyer was like, don't even worry about it. We're already on it. So they had a cease and desist uh, going on with that before the end of the day. So, no, right. I'm not a Trump fan. I'm, as a matter of fact, I'm not really big into politics because a lot of it is crazy to me. Right. And we're not even going to go down that road right now. Right, but, right. Uh, no, I did not sanction that move at all. Right. Period. That was a few years back. That was before uh, COVID. Right, right. Yeah, that was, that was some time ago. Yeah, so nah, I don't, no. Nah. Right, right. You don't want to get that confused. You don't want to get that confused with people saying that you <laughs> a fan no, of no, I mean, to be honest <laughs> with you, like, once again, I'm not really into politics like that because as far as I'm concerned, all of them, for real, for real, like, right. Same thing. Right. I mean, yeah. they want you to pick a team. Okay, some of y'all can be over here. Some of y'all can be over here. So it's just a bunch of divide and conquer stuff, if you ask me. Right. All of them still in the same rooms together. That's true. Talking that same, you know what I mean? Right, right. So that's why I'm not real heavy on, you know, politics like that. I just kind of take God's orders and move, you know what I mean, the way that I feel I should be moving in right. a positive manner. So what That's do you it. what do you think about hip hop today and how it trans transitioned from when it started back in in the Bronx and where is that now? Because a lot of us didn't think that. Well, a lot of people didn't think that hip hop would last as long as it did. But hip hop hip hop has become big. I mean, it's a cult. It's become a it's a way of life. You know, as far as like fashion, music, um, even you know back in the day when. Um, KRS-One and um, Public Enemy uh, was, uh, you know, um, putting out music. It was more conscious uh, than it is today. How do you feel about how what hip hop was then and where it is at now? Um, I'm not a big fan of a, a lot of stuff that I hear nowadays. I think they've taken a lot of stuff too far. Mm -hmm. You know, God bless a lot of the young ones. They weren't there. Right. You know what I mean? When all this stuff was going on. But well, y'all had Luke and y'all had this one and that one. I was like, yeah, but it was still different. Right. Right. Still different. We were raised with different morals back then. Right. Right. If you did something you had no business doing back then, you could get an ass whooping. Mm -hmm. Now it's against the law to get an ass whooping. Right. It's so a yeah. difference. The temperature is different now. Mm -hmm. This is not to say that there aren't any artists that are coming out now that I uh, happen to like. I do happen to like a lot of hard artists that are coming out right now, but a lot of them are not commercial artists. They right. underground. Shout out to Simba. Mm -hmm. I'm crazy about him. Shout out to Griselda. Shout out to R.J. Payne, um, uh, shout out to Rhapsody, um, and it's a bunch of them mm -hmm. out there that I like. I mean, the only ones that, for me, right. that I that I could give you know a positive nod to would be people like your J. Coles of the world and Kendrick Lamar's and you know people like that. Mm -hmm. um, and there and there are a bunch of others. I mean, I could I, I can name a lot of them, but a lot of them are not commercial artists. They are, you know, relegated to the underground because a lot of these labels don't want to push that. Right. You know what I mean, a lot of them want to push like this very negative uh, narrative. You know, right. this over, over overly sexualized narrative, uh, a bunch of foolishness and whatnot. Mm -hmm. They want to push that. You know what I mean? Right, right. Bunch of negativity because they figure that 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 makes money, and all it's doing is just dumbing us down as a people. So I I noticed that you mentioned a group like Public Enemy, who mm -hmm. just happens to be my personal favorite rap group of all time. Big up oh, to yeah. Chuck D, Flavor mm -hmm. Flav, and um and Professor Griff. Yeah. Um, you're not gonna get that no more. No, it, it seems like it seems like we're not get we're not 
because uh, the, the music, the hip hop that I hear um, now is not, I grew up on hip hop and I grew up on, like we was just saying, you know, uh, KRS-One, uh, Rakim, uh, Eric B, uh, LL Cool J, you know, music then uh, was, the lyrics were more relevant uh, back then, you know, they had something to say. It was more, now it's like you said, it's, it seems like hip hop has become, um, it's, it's just a, a lot of uh, the same type of stuff being said, you know, a lot of negativity, um, you know, it's not bringing any consciousness to to or awareness to the to the table, which is sad. Now, you think? Do you think that social media has a lot to do with that? A whole lot to do with it. You know what I mean? You can go to social media right now. I guarantee you, some girl on there got her ass in your face. Yeah. You know what I mean? I guarantee you, it's some guy, you know, with a pistol or you know, with some drugs. I seen a post the other day that really hurt my soul. Mm -hmm. uh, these guys were in prison. They, dra they drug this dude into a cell, stabbed him up, and was dragging him across the floor. This dude bleeding, and, and I'm quite sure he died. Right. Wow. See, that's another thing. I'm not, I mean, okay, I see social media is here and this and that, and I don't think it's going nowhere, but that thing is a gift and a curse. Yeah. Yeah. It's a gift and a curse. Like we're seeing so much stuff now that we probably wouldn't ordinarily see. If it not if 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 it's not for uh, uh what I'm trying to say, without social media, you wouldn't right. see a lot of stuff that that you're seeing now, yes. and it's really turning everything up. Like I'm like, yeah, yeah, you're right. I I, I, was, I was looking at Instagram today, and some of the stuff that that I saw, some of the videos that people are posting on social media, it's just gruesome. Like it's it's. I feel like we deal with, we have to deal with enough violence in our neighborhoods, you know, but to to watch it constantly on social media after a while, it just, it can mentally drain you, you know? Um, and, you know, everybody, you know, everybody has a camera now. Mm -hmm. not it's not like i always hit this microphone sometimes with my chin and turn it off but it's not uh i miss the old music that you know the more relevant music things where they had things to to say you know some some something more valuable to say but today is we don't we don't get a lot of that absolutely and you know it's just like you said we don't get a lot of it there is some out there but right like i said a moment ago you got to go underground to hear right. all the quality music and they only let a couple of them you know become commercial only maybe one or two okay that's enough right there we don't want to steer them in the right direction too much you know let's mm -hmm. keep on dumbing them down you know what i mean right. and it's sad it is and um I'm looking at this one young lady. I don't want to call her name, but she got this crazy song out there talking about the color of her behind and this and that. Mm -hmm. And you know, a lot of people know what I'm talking about. And I'm right. like, come on, man, y'all let that go. Y'all let that get through. Yeah. That's probably about this ratchet. This is probably the most ratchet song. And I've heard a lot of ratchet stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I promise you that. But I think this is probably one of the most ratchet songs that I think I've ever heard. Yeah. And her parents, not not this young girl. I think her parents ought to be ashamed of themselves. Right. Because evidently they failed that child. Mm hmm Right. In order That's for all that is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. We be looking at these kids, well, why this kid act like this? And son, 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 go back to where they come from. Mm-hmm. Well, none of them born like that. That's true. That's true. All of this is learned behavior. And a lot of them are part of a vicious cycle. Mm-hmm. In their family, you know what I mean? That goes back. Right, right. You know, and there's so many levels to this particular onion that we're talking about. Mm. You know what I mean? When you're talking about people that, once again, are part of a vicious cycle as far as their family is concerned, and there's nobody that has come along in their family or outside of their family to come in and help break that, break cycle. that cycle. Right, exactly. Exactly. So you're just going to have a continuous cycle of ignorance. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. 
yeah, you can hear it. Yeah, like you said, we we hear it in the music. You know, it's 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 sad. You know, um, it's just not like it was when we was coming up and listening to music. Uh, I come from my mother. She um she used to sing. My my dad was in a group. I came from a background in music, and we listened to a lot of oldies, but goodies. Um, a lot of music that had a lot of relevance to it. Where you know, um where the guys were talking about serenading women. Now, today, you don't get that anymore. No, no, you know, no, it's, not about that. Not, yeah, it's a whole bunch Nothing. of, let me grab your ass and let me grab, you know, let me do, I mean, well, a lot of us women don't want to be uh, uh, talked to like that, you know, when it comes. So it's it's sad that what we get in today is, is not what we had in the past. I heard Jill Scott say something that, uh, as far as I'm concerned, was very, very poignant. She said she was tired of this bitch and that bitch. Mm -hmm. She was tired of hearing that. Right. Where my ladies at? Where my women at? Where my queens at? Mm -hmm. You know. Exactly. Yeah. I'm this kind of bitch. I'm that kind of bitch. I'm, I'm a bad bitch. Well, I mean, let's look at the, the, the real meaning of that particular word. Mm -hmm. I a think dog. It's, yeah. But they don't want to believe that. But as a fact. Right. If you look that word up in the dictionary, female dog. Yeah. So is that, is, that, is that how you really see yourself? Exactly. But if you talk to any of them that speak that way, they can't absorb that. Mm -hmm. They can't relate. To, they can't make the connection to that. They think, oh, you know, this is just the way we talk. No, right. that word right. that you use and has a particular meaning to it, yeah. and it has a very negative connotation to it. And you can't just turn that into something else. That's what that is. Yeah, you degrading yourself, basically. You know. But once again, because they've been so daggone indoctrin indoctrinated with all this foolishness, mm -hmm. and like this is all they know. Right. Right. You know what I mean? So after we after we start getting into this particular person mm -hmm. and start breaking them down, well, wow, where did that mentality come from? Let's see who her parents are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And let's see who their parents were. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you got the babies making babies thing. I agree to a point because you have some children who were raised up in a proper home but you know the streets have a big influence on a lot of the kids in the community you know when they go out the door uh you all you see out there is you know you might see somebody out there selling drugs or you might see somebody you know um but you do have some, I'm not saying all, all children, but I'm just saying that, you know, some, most, a lot of parents have raised their children, um, but the streets can get a hold of them. Well, then see, they done failed them somewhere still. Because if you put the right thing in that kid's head and yeah. that kid respects you, first of all, yeah, number one, your child got to respect you. They have to respect your word. That's true. To where they don't even... Uh, they don't even question what you're talking about. Remember, we was raised on yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, sir, no, sir. That's true. These yeah. kids don't. Even, they don't know nothing about that. Nope. See, so if you much freedom, parents. I'm sorry. They have too much freedom. Too right. much. Yeah. yeah. So they don't respect their parents, and yes, their parents could be some good people and still trying to guide them in the right direction. Mm -hmm. But if they don't respect your word. Right. And you're still going to do what you want to do. That's true. See, that's true. so that's what it is. And a lot of the parents don't know, don't know how to gain their kids' respect because they're so busy focusing on something else instead mm -hmm. of putting everything on their kids. Mm -hmm. Right. And we're not arguing, you know what I mean? We're just talking, you see. But that's what it is. You still don't fail that child somewhere. And the fact that you didn't get that child to respect you and respect your word. Right. Right. Yeah, that's true. I did the best I could. Well, you ain't doing enough because that kid still don't respect you. That's true. Yeah. 
That's what it. That's what it's about. Yeah, because you're right. R A R E S P E C T. Yeah, you know that's right. That's right. Yeah, that's all it is. They don't that's respect true. their parents. Yeah. Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. How am not? How am I not gonna know what I'm talking about when that little road that you call yourself trying to go down? You know, I built that road. That's true. They don't. I know every it. curve in that road that you're trying to go down already. That's the and thing. They don't. Pass. I'm that's sorry. The thing they, that's the thing. They don't think that we've been there already. They, you know, <laughs> they don't understand. We've been there already. We done done that already. Let's and we think about to keep this. You from... Let's think about this. Just mathematically. Mm -hmm. right, technically, okay. I'm 65. You 15. You might even be younger than 15. You might be 12. <laughs> so you mean to tell me right. you've done more and seen more in your life in 12 years than I have in 65 years? <laughs> make that make some kind of sense to me. You ain't even making no kind of sense. Ain't nothing you can tell me. Now, you might be able to tell me about the brand new little iPhone that came out yesterday. Right. Or something like that. But mm -hmm. I'm talking about, excuse me, I'm talking about life in general. Right. I built the road that you call yourself trying to go down. Mm -hmm. If you want to know how to get down there, all you got to do is ask me. I will tell you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. They but have... there's no way, uh, theoretically, there's no way that you can tell me you know anything more about life than I do. Because, in fact, I've been here for a much longer time mm -hmm. than you have. Right. Period. Yeah. Yeah, but you can't tell these young folks that, you know, you can't tell them that it's you, you try to prevent them from learning the hard way. But, you know, sometimes that's the only way for them to learn. It's sad. But well, just like I said, there's no respect there. So it's after 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 they've lost respect or never had respect, mm -hmm. no matter what you say, you could be Martin Luther King. Mm -hmm. You know, it don't matter. That's yeah, true. So you yeah. got to get their respect first. That's After true. that, now I can get to you because, okay, I, okay, well, yeah, okay, he or she means something to me because I respect it. Mm -hmm. If they don't know nothing else, they do know what respect is. I will give them that. But some of them have a very miscued idea of what that is. A lot of them respect the wrong things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's true. So, uh, and and a lot of the it's music, and, and a lot of the music is, and it's, sh and it like you like like we was just saying, it shows in the music that we're listening to now today. You know, um, you know, everything is about. We know that music generates wealth. We know that music generates wealth, but that's all they're seeing. You know. Um, in the videos and things like that, or they're seeing a lot of violence or listening to a lot of the lyrics because because that can influence kids. You know, they listen to that and then they feel like, oh, okay, I could go out here and I could grab a gun and I could go do this to a person, you know. But, you know, it's a shame that we can't bring the, that good music back again. But a lot of these artists are doing, are becoming more independent. A lot of these um, artists are uh, independent, and that goes back to what we was talking about before with social media, because with social media, you're able to put any kind of music out there. And right. that's the thing, you know, um, there's no really control on uh, music. And, and, and I guess that's the reason why these record labels don't want to make these investments into artists anymore. Um, well, that's one that? of the reasons. That's one of the reasons. The other reason is back in the day when they were putting a whole lot of money in arts and they were losing a lot of money, mm -hmm. they were like, ah, okay, we got to do something different because this is not working. Well, it's your fault. It ain't their fault. It's your fault for picking a garbage artist, number one. It's your yeah. fault for uh, 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 getting behind, you know, this foolishness, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, uh, but once again, so now... Uh, they create a situation like 360 deals with these record labels. Mm -hmm. So whereas when I sign you as an artist, now I get a piece of everything that you do, everything. I even get a piece of your show money. 
And they didn't do that back in the day. No. They only got a piece. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, no. The, the the show money was belonged to the artists. That's right. So when did they start? Uh, I guess they just trying to, uh, it's greed, I guess. I guess you could say that. Well, that's definitely what it is. You yeah. know, like I said, just like I said a moment ago, they was losing so much money. They said, well, we're, if you want if you want us to sign you, you know, we, we have a thing called the 360 deal, which is uh-huh. all monies, you know what I'm saying, that's, 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 that's generated by you, whether it be your show money, merch money, Anything that we can get up, we need we need some of your publishing, everything, which is really crazy. I'm not giving you none of my publishing. You can stop that part yeah. because that's the money that we get after we dead and gone that can be going to our families and this and that. You know what I mean? Right. But these 360 deals, these kids basically sign their lives away. Mm. And that's because the reason why they do this is the number one, because they're so greedy. Well, not greedy, they so excited, they don't know any better, right. they don't have proper counseling as far as the music industry is concerned, and they just they ready to go, you know what I'm saying? Just like, right. like remember they was jumping double dust, and you'd be staying outside. <laughs> you yeah, to jump in. Jump, and, right. So when you jump in, boy, you know they got you going there. You know, right, what I mean? right. But that's what the 360 deal thing is is all about. But it's just like you said back in the day, we they had none of that, mm-hmm. and that's why no artists from my particular era, you never catch none of us signing no kind of 360 deal in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Right. That's absolutely not going to happen. We will go independent or just stop making records. Period. You know what I'm saying? If that be the case. So the industry okay. is crazy now. Mm-hmm. I heard Snoop talking the other day, talking about streaming. Mm-hmm. I think is garbage. Uh, what is a percent of one cent? Mm. That's it. You get a, a particular percent of one cent. Snoop is like, well, what is that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It and don't make, make no it, sense. It don't make sense at all, but they making billions and millions of dollars off the streaming music. Mm-hmm. You know? They ain't I giving guess, us nothing. Which is, that's sad. Where they do that at? You can't take that nowhere in the world. No. I don't care, I don't care what type of currency we talking about. There's no such thing, you know what I'm saying, as a percent of one cents. Right. One cent is the lowest money, or I guess money amount or what have you. That, excuse me, that you can that you could that you could uh, uh, uh monetarily transfer. Mm-hmm. I guess Especially in the United States. So right. once again, what are we talking about? <laughs> you right. know what I mean? So they need to do something about that, man. They they need to nah, nah, we need to start all the way back over. <laughs> right. Back where we right. Had exactly it's and a it, mess it really is a mess yeah i see the music industry has changed a lot you mm-hmm. know since uh people are able to just you know um since social media basically you know it really has changed it so much i mean I, you would be better off just putting out your own music and making money that way you know rather than signing a deal with a major label if you could afford to do it though right See, that's the part. And a lot of people, okay, I'm going to go independent. Okay, that sounds good. Mm-hmm. But you're going to need money for marketing and promotion, especially right. if you want your stuff hitting radio, which is still important, believe it or not. Yeah, that's or true. If you want to put your music in position to where it could get on the billboard charts and stuff like that, these things are important. Mm-hmm. And it's sad, but it's true. You need a marketing and promotional budget to be able to put yourself in place to be, you know, in these in these in these positions. Do you think you need as much? Like happen? Do you think you need as much money now to to do that? Being that we have social media where people can, you know, people can record their own videos and promote and market now. Once uh, again, that seems that seems to be the way now today. Uh, yes. Yes and no. Everybody, TikTok this, TikTok that. Okay, that joint is all right. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. You know, like the restrictions are getting tighter, mm-hmm. tighter on TikTok. Right. You know what I mean? Um. So now, once you get situations like that going on, now we got to shift gears again and figure something else out. Right. It's kind of crazy because TikTok is now basically the new radio. 
You know, yeah. if you blow up on TikTok and all these radio people, they listen to, oh, that record hot on TikTok. We need to pick that up. And nine times out of 10, the records be garbage. Mm -hmm. Case in point, this record that I was talking about, about this young lady, which a lot of our listeners probably know exactly what record I'm talking about right now. I'm just not going to mention uh, this child's name because I don't know her right. at all. She, she, I, 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 got, I have a child her age. You know what I mean? Right. Right. So she's a child to me. Um, But... I'm saying all that to say situations like TikTok allows for a lot of this foolishness to go through. Mm -hmm. Because for the most part, radio ain't picking up no record like that. Right. Uh, you know, those, them records, man, that's going against the, the FCC guidelines. And, all, you know, and then if you do do a clean version, it's such beep, 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 right. beep, 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 And then the record for all the beats in the joint. So, yeah. yeah. So yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. I guess you could put you could put anything out there nowadays. This is <laughs> it's terrible. Mm -hmm. you know? Or if you try to get to the major uh I guess I want to say if you want to get to a major label, it would be best to if your music is good, it would be best to go with a successful label that's already, you know, like a um uh, Rick Ross uh label or uh, jay-z label or something like that you know but they are going to make sure the music is, is quality music before they sign you to a major deal and invest their money mm -hmm. you know so well, of these major labels like warner you know or one of those conglomerates so like i said they hey they looking at analytics Right. Ain't nobody about, using their ears no more. There's no such thing because the position of A and R, right? Up, right. That's done. Mm -hmm. They don't even do that no more. We don't, we don't need that. We're looking at all these numbers here. Yeah, that's it. And if the analysts, okay, if they got X amount of, you know, likes and views and this and that, okay, that's what we going on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what? What about this part right here? Yeah. Yeah. It's all about money. <laughs> It's all, it's all about money. Period. We don't care about putting no good music out there. How much money can we make off this joint right here? Right. That's all that matters to them. They could care less about the musical integrity or anything like that. So mm -hmm. once again, people that are putting out that type of music that can afford to do it, mm -hmm. then my hat is, you know what I'm saying? I tip my hat to them. Right. And, right. Uh, you know, hopefully they can continue to do that. They can continue to keep up because... There are a lot of successful independent artists out there. Mm -hmm. So, right. you know, but right. it's just, you know, I guess you got to pick which direction you want to go in. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. So what's next for you? Um, Just still working. I got, a, I have a song that's floating around out there right now called Cha Cha Cha. Mm -hmm. We have two versions. We have the original version. And this is the line dance record. Right. Uh, because my thing was, I'm trying to get people back on the dance floor. And see, that's another thing, not to beat these youngers up, but let's just go ahead and talk about it while we're talking about them. Right. Ain't none of them making no danceable music. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We used to get that. We used to get like a, 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 a hook, a good hook and a good beat. We don't even get that no more. I don't even hear that no more. But it's, 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 you know, you know, it's not something that's going to make you want to go burn the dance floor. And remember, we went to a club. We went to dance. Right. Party and this and that. The young ones, they, you know, what we need a dance floor for? All we need is a big VIP section, mm -hmm. you know, bottle service. And all we're going to do, and our dance floor is on our phones right here. Mm -hmm. We taking selfies and we post it. Right. So it's right. different vibe. Whole different yeah. vibe. Every bit, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. me... Coming from the era and the generation that I come from, just like I said, we like to party, we like to dance. And mm -hmm. so Cha 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 record, I don't know if you've heard it or not, but um, that was my way of bringing people back to the dance floor, getting people back together because it's a line dance record and everybody can get in on a good line dance, you know? Right, like, right. Yeah. Like right now. What I will give these youngest credit for is that Swag Surfer record. Oh, I yeah, yeah. Yeah. Everybody can do this. Everybody, yeah. <laughs> yep. And they get in on that. Uh -huh. so, yeah. Now that's a turn in the right direction, even though that was made some years ago. Right. But I'm glad that that, that 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 record has developed some sort of stand power. Mm -hmm. 
I did. I was I was I was the host DJ for the new edition tour last year when it first came out. I did all 30 cities. Mm -hmm. Every night I played that swag surfer record. Can you imagine 20, 25,000 people in an arena? Everybody going Anybody there in there swagging. Yeah. Crazy. Mm -hmm. So hats off to um, I think that that group is called FLY. Okay. Yes. Wow. Yes. Yeah. yeah. They did that. You know what I mean? Like that record came out, then it fell off for me, and then it came right back around, and now it's psh. Now so it's yeah, good. I get in that. You know, records yeah. like the wobble, shout out to my man Mr. Collie Park. He produced that one. Okay. Anything that you can get people dancing together off of. And so right. that was my thing with Cha Cha Cha. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Good old line dance record, which I'm not, I've never done any line dance records. Right. You know, all my records is this, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And you know, and this, you know, when I say this, you say that, and somebody say ho oh, and all of that. Right. But line dance is still this, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Getting everybody together. Yeah. In unison. Yeah. And we and we dancing and we're having a good time, man. It and, and and it's and it's it doesn't have any age restrictions. Right, right. And it's anybody can get in on a line dance. Yeah, and it's something you can any, anybody from mm -hmm. anywhere. You know what I'm saying? As long as you learn the little step, right? You, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so yeah. I, and that's that's why I came up with Cha Cha Cha. So we have the original version that came out in 2020, mm -hmm. and the remix came out 2022. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cha Cha Cha. So where did you did you record that in the studio? Is that or you recorded that? How did you? In Richmond, Virginia. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Um, we need, yeah, we need some more, some more line dancing and some more, you know, music where we can get on the dance floor and party. Ain't too much of that no more, you know? So, mm -hmm. you know, so it's sad that we don't have that, but, um, you was inducted into the hip hop hall of fame. 2019, and 2019, yeah. 2019, and then yes. and, and and um Washington D.C. Right? Yes, yes. Okay. And I was told that I'm going to be inducted into the um uh Universal Hip Hop Museum uh in New York in 2024 next year. Oh, okay. All right. So that's another you know Hall of Fame type thing for hip hop. Yeah, yeah. So so I uh I tell people all the time I'm going in for hip hop, but I'm bringing Go Go with me. Mm -hmm. You see, because right. everything that I do on the go go side is all about continuing Chuck Brown's legacy. Right. I made a promise to his family and to uh, the memory of his spirit at his memorial service when I was asked to speak. I uh, one of the things that I said was that I uh, I would like for everybody in the hip hop community to. I'm sorry, in the go-go community to do whatever they could to help continue Chuck Brown's legacy. Mm -hmm. We owe him that. Yeah, we sure do. Yep. May sure I ask where you're from? I'm from New Jersey. Okay. I, I, I grew up in Trenton, New Jersey. Okay. Um, so, you know, um, like I said, I grew up on hip hop, uh, I, I remember back in the day when I used to break dance back in the day, uh, you know, I had friends who liked the graffiti back in the day. We did all of that stuff back in the day. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, when I think back at that time, it just brings back so many good memories uh, when, you know, when we used to have a great time with music. I remember I used to get out of school and after school we would go to a friend's house and we would listen to Sugar Hill Gang. We put on Sugar Hill mm -hmm. and, and Apache. That was the that, that was the yeah. joint. We used to rock that in the house. It was a house party. We would have one mm -hmm. every every other day after school, you know. But um, you know, those times it brings back so much good memories as far mm -hmm. as hip hop and hip hop has done a lot for a lot of people, you know. Um, as far as financially, hip hop is really. The money that these artists are making today, whoo, they're making so much money today. But it's kind of funny. You said something about Trenton, New Jersey. So I have some very good friends from Trenton. Shout out to Redman. Okay. Shout out to Fletch from Naughty by Nature. 
And while we're speaking about Tretch, who was a very, very dear friend of mine, I heard him say this one time about hip hop. He says, if it wasn't for hip hop, I'd be the one breaking in your house. Mm. Yeah, hip hop. Hip -hop. You see? Mm -hmm. So it has done a lot for a lot of people. It you did. know what I mean? And I think, once again, for those of us that are a part of this culture, we also need to continue whatever we can do to keep the legacy of hip hop alive. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, we have to, you know, because like like we was just talking about, it did a lot for a lot of people's families. I mean, you know, people who would never have an opportunity to, you know, be successful and make that type of money, you know, like like they're making now today. Look at Jay Z. He is a billionaire. Mm -hmm. Back when we heard Sugar Hill Gang, you would have never thought nobody would wind up being a billionaire because of hip hop. Hip hop, hop. exactly. That's true. Never. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Never thought that thought. But see, I will give the youngins one thing. A lot of them have a very, very good, uh, not all of them, but a lot of them have a very good entrepreneurial spirit. Right. They know how to get that money. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Because they know, because now they have the technology and everything that they mm -hmm. can use, and they know how to use it. Right. So I give you that for those of them that are using it in the right way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. And they're making a lot of money. Yes, indeed. Yeah. yeah. And they're getting endorsements and things, all kinds of endorsements. Right. You know, brand deals and things of that nature. Um, hip hop has really come a long, long way, boy. I tell you. But see, that's why I don't get the fact that a lot of them don't thank the pioneers for opening them doors for them. Right. And I ain't saying you got to give them nothing. But if right. you ever meet one of them, man, thank you. That's right. For building this, this if it, if thing for us. If it wasn't for them there wouldn't be no them you know period yeah yeah so if they just say thank you i think that's enough mm -hmm. and if you want to do something else on top of that then hey that's on you but you know when you see people like melly mel and all of these people mm -hmm. go up to them shake them dudes hands give them a hug or something just say thank you you know what i'm saying right. for what you've done mm -hmm. who hurt all of them people like that Right. To give an opportunity to meet these people. And now I've seen this happen. Mm -hmm. I have seen it happen. I was a part of an amazing uh, event a couple of weeks back in Atlanta City. Shout out to Charlie Mack uh, okay. from I Philadelphia. Yeah. Yes. Who, man, who don't know Charlie yeah, Mack? Charlie, Charlie yeah. Mack is, is something else. <laughs> right. um, but shout out to him for the uh, event that he put together for the for the 50 year anniversary. Mm -hmm. uh, in case a lot of people missed it, there were 50 hip hop artists from the 70s, 80s, and the 90s. We all performed together at a venue called Boardwalk Hall in Atlantic City. Everybody came out and done one song a piece back to back. It was incredible. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying all that to say there were a lot of those pioneers were there. Right. You know, a lot of people whose music that I played back in the day, people like the sequence. I ain't never seen the sequence. Mm. Sequence right before Salt and Pepper, even thought about. Right, right. You know, sequence, matter of fact, they used to write for Sugar Hill Records. Wow. That's that Angie is... Stone in them. Oh, really? That's yes, the sequence is from South Carolina. Okay, uh, that's news to me. Right. They used yeah. to write, they wrote some of that Sugar Hill Sugar Hill Records stuff for, for Sugar Hill Gang and some other artists. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's Angie Stone. Uh, who was Angie B back then, mm -hmm. Blondie, which is her sister, and uh, the, the other lady, Cheryl the Pearl. Yeah, okay. Right? Had the song Funk You Right On Up and all I this mean, early Sugar Hill record stuff. Mm -hmm. They were there. Uh, 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 who else did I see? Teela Rock, who I never met. Mm -hmm. Had the first recording on Def Jam song, It's Yours. Mm -hmm. Him and DJ Jazzy J. Jazzy J wasn't there, but Teela Rock was there. I never seen Teela Rock in my life. Took a picture okay. with him. Everything. Uh, 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 a lot of artists, uh, 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 the Crash Crew was there. Mm. I've never seen them in person. Wow. Um, I do know Grandmaster Cavs, but i never seen the rest of the Cold Crush brothers in person. Mm -hmm. 
I played day records back in the day. Remember, I was, you know, DJing since 77. So a lot right. of that early hip hop stuff that I was catching coming from New York. Right. I'm playing these records, but I had never met these people other right. than just like I say, Grandmaster Cass. So mm -hmm. when I did meet these people, I'm like, yo, man, I played your music back in the day. Thank you for your contribution, this, that, and the other. And for real, for, I'm just as old as a lot. I'm 65. Mm -hmm. so I'm in the class with Grandmaster Flash and Curtis Blow and all of them cats. Right. You know? But but still, once again, just because I've never seen a lot of these folks, but I played their music, you still got to go up and give them their flowers. That's right. That's you true. See? Yeah, that's true. That's why I like Drink Champs, because I like that podcast, because I like the fact that uh, we get to hear the stories from some of the artists of the past mm -hmm. and the drills behind the scene um situations they dealt with uh you know that we would we we probably would never know about um you know and the fact that nori noriega likes to give you know the old school artists their flowers you know mm -hmm. so it's it's good to have um platforms like like uh, this one and, you know, um, Drink Champs and a lot of other podcasts, we get to hear their stories of, of things that have passed. So what are you going to be doing? Where's your next uh, performance going to be? We will be somewhere. I don't know the exact. Let me see something here. I got to look at this. Um, um, well, not this Saturday because I just got back. Uh, okay. the past week, the uh, July 4th stuff was like the weekend, basically. Uh, Tuesday, uh, what was that? Uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Um, so I'm off this particular weekend, but next weekend we start back up. And uh, I'm part of a tour company called I Love the 90s, okay. And that's by uh, a group uh, uh, out of New York called Universal. And uh, we have an I Love the 90s date next Saturday, I think somewhere outside of Detroit or something. I think we're flying into Detroit and driving into somewhere in Ohio close by somewhere. I don't okay. know right now. I got to look at my itinerary. But uh, yeah, we got an I Love the 90s date next week. Uh, I think it's me, CNC Music Factory, okay. uh, Young MC, and Tresh. Oh, so Tresh from that? Naughty by Nature. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's what's up. Yeah, but you know, Naughty by Nature has they doing some different stuff now. They haven't. Yeah, it's yeah. just stretch now. Yes, or oh. you see Vinny and KG as um what they call themselves. Vinny and KG call themselves um. Mm -mm 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 -mm. It escapes me right now, but it'll come to me probably when I think about something else. But oh. yeah, Naughty by Nature, you know. So they go. Okay. Oh, so they doing their thing. They still they're doing different they stuff. still yeah. doing different stuff, but they still doing their thing. Well, cool DJ Cool. It, it was a pleasure having you on the platform. Um, you know, you're you're a legend in the game, and and I want to give you your flowers right now. Um, you know, because um, you put a mark in in this in this game we call hip hop, and uh, I look forward to hearing this new uh music you got out now uh if i haven't heard it yet but um it's more it's more prevalent in the line dance community okay now, if you know people that line dance you can talk to them ask them about cha 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 they be like yeah i know that so okay so like i said it's in that community which is um i didn't understand how big the line dance community is right people they have line dance oh. groups everywhere mm-hmm everywhere oh yeah is, and i thought it was more so relegated to like the south or whatever but no they got line dance groups in new york philly jersey everywhere mm -hmm, mm -hmm. west coast midwest yeah everywhere oh yeah everybody people still like still like the line dance you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, and they have these groups and whatnot all, from all these different places and people teaching line dance classes and also kind of stuff so and i mean it's it's a good form of exercise mm -hmm. for older folks. Right. You know, they might not get no exercise until they go to that line dance class, boy, and then they in there and they moving. And then... <laughs> That's, <indeed>. That's true. <laughs> well, it was a pleasure having you on. Uh, I look forward to hearing this new music. And, uh, you know, you keep doing your thing, man. I mean, that, uh, I probably, once I go get in my car, I probably hear that song, Let Me Clear Your Throat. I'll probably hear it as soon as I get in the car. <laughs> <laughs> 
Now that that's a classic. That's something Thank our you. our you know our, our our grandkids and their kids will be listening to, you know. And uh, hopefully we can keep you know hip, hip hop can start putting out more longevity music, you know, more classic music, something with relevance. Hopefully that'll come back. Again. We'll, we'll 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 see. I guess we have to wait and see. <laughs> There's some people out here that are capable of doing it. You know what I mean. Yeah. And ever so often, you get something that comes on that's gonna have some staying power. Right. Um, a lot of the young ones don't seem to get the idea of that. Right. But there are some that do. You know yeah. what I mean. So you know, we can only hope for more of that. That's true. That's true. Yep. All right, so everyone like and subscribe and hit that notification button for the next episode of Let's Talk About This. Again, DJ Cool, thanks again for being on with me this evening. I appreciate you taking the time out. And uh, you take care of yourself and good luck on that tour you got coming up. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right. You have a All good right. one. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Okay, bye-bye.